Hey, what's going on? Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com. And in this video, I'm gonna to try to cover everything that I can for back to school shopping at GouletPens.com. Now, for those of you who don't know, we at Goulet Pens, we're all about some fountain pens. So everything that I'm gonna be recommending here is gonna be keeping in mind that this is for students who are looking to use fountain pens as a part of their note-taking experience in school. So everything that I'm talking about here is gonna have a bent towards fountain pens. So there are a lot of different products out there that you can use for school. And of, of course I can't cover everything, but from what I know, from what I carry and fountain pen related stuff, keeping that in mind, this is kind of how I'm gonna lay it out. Now I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently than I've done some other ones. It's gonna be a little bit long because I'm trying to cram a lot of information in here. And normally what I do is I kind of record a notebook, I do it off the top of my head, or maybe I'll split it into little parts so that I can memorize all the right facts and get it all nailed down. But what I'm actually doing on this one is I've got my computer here, so I'm gonna be glancing at some notes. I normally don't like to do that, but I just have so much detail stuff that I wanna cover here. I wanna make sure that I don't leave anything out. So that said, first thing I wanna cover is fountain pen advantages. Why would you even use fountain pens in school, right? Um, well, personally, I didn't discover fountain pens until I was already out of school. So I don't have personal experience to draw upon in a school setting using fountain pens. I wish, I wish I had discovered them because I would have loved to use them in school. But alas, what are you gonna do? So um, there's definitely some advantages. Uh, for one, they're economical. Um, if you're using pens for a long period of time, it's uh, unquestionable that fountain pens and fountain pen ink is more economical than both ballpoint and rollerball if you're talking strictly about the writing, the ink uh, usage and stuff like that. You are paying more upfront though. Fountain pens in general are more expensive. The bottles of ink are more of an investment. And so for a student, Usually you're getting set up for the first time. So unless you happen to have been bequeathed, you know, a beautiful pen of some kind or a collection of pens or something from your family, uh, you are probably going to have to be starting from scratch if you're looking to get into fountain pens in school. So you're gonna have to pay a little bit more upfront. So it may not seem economical because you gotta make that investment first, but over the long haul, it is gonna be more economical. And especially if you're going from like a high school setting into college, if you invest in a, a good pen or a couple of good pens and a couple bottles of ink, it's gonna last you all through college as opposed to just plowing through disposable stuff all day long. Um, now, uh, another thing that's really cool is that you can really enjoy what you're actually doing with your note taking. Now, these days, you know, I am not blind to the fact that everybody's using computers. I'm using one right now. Um, but I can say that from my experience when I was using computers in school, you know, I, was, I graduated uh, Virginia Tech in 2006 and Facebook came out in 2004 when I was a junior in college. And I can tell you that as soon as Facebook came out, no one was paying attention in class. Everybody was on Facebook. So it was kind of ironic. We would all come to, come to class, we'd be in one room together, completely ignoring what the professor was saying, going on Facebook and talking to other people that may very well be in the class that we're talking to. You know, it's just crazy. So if you are putting the laptop away, physically taking notes by hand. You are going to be much more engaged with what the professor is saying, and you are going to be enjoying the actual note-taking experience as opposed to distracting yourself with, you know, whatever stuff is on the internet or your email or whatever. You know, there's plenty of stuff to distract you on your computer or your phone as opposed to actually taking notes by hand. After all, isn't the point of being in school kind of to learn what the teacher is saying? Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But um, another key point about the enjoyment is that you get to use your pen, your ink, your paper. You get to kind of personalize it. You get to enjoy the, the tactile feel of it. And when you're writing, especially when you're writing longhand, uh, you know, cursive writing, it's actually more engaging for your brain. It's more of an instrument as opposed to just jotting notes down. You're actually firing off synapses in your brain that are causing you to be more mentally stimulated and to retain more of what you're actually writing as opposed to if you're just clicking away on the keyboard. So writing things down physically is more engaging for you and you're more likely to retain what's actually going on. Not to mention if you got any professors out there who are interested in fountain pens, it's gonna make you stand out. It's gonna be a point of conversation right there and it never hurts to being good with the teacher. I can say we got a fair number of uh, customers here at Goulet that are college professors that really enjoy when their students are into pens. And all, some of them even try and get their students into pens because they like the advantages so much. So one more benefit for using fountain pens is that 
it is actually less tiring for your hand. You're not having to write with pressure like you do to keep a ballpoint going. Fountain pen is much more effortless. The ink itself is more fluid, so it flows more freely out of the pen. So you're able to take note writing uh, for longer periods of time without your hand cramping up. So it's, uh, it's physically better for your hand, but it also allows you to sit, especially if you've got longer classes going on, you can write for longer periods of time and not get fatigued. Now, of course, I'm not completely naive to the fact that there are some drawbacks to using fountain pens. For one, it requires some planning and preparation. You know, you have to clean out your pen every so often, every few weeks, maybe once a month. So it's not a huge deal, but you have to kind of maintain those pens. And you have to make sure that your pen is filled with ink. You can't just write with it forever and then throw it out when it's done like you do with a, a you know, ballpoint or something. So you have to do a little bit of, you know, intentional planning when you're using a fountain pen. And kind of the other disadvantage is that you have to be responsible for that pen. You know, fountain pens are usually a little bit more of an investment. You have to pay a little bit more. You have to be a little more careful with them. You can't just go tossing them around all over the place and leaving them sitting out and they might get stolen. They might get lost. Um, so you have to be a little bit more on top of what you're doing with your pen than you would maybe with some other pens. All right, so let's talk notebooks. There's a whole slew of different notebooks out there um, that you can go with. The ones that tend to be the most popular for students are side wire bound notebooks because they are most economical and they are generally pretty durable and they don't have a lot of extra fluff around them. It's not like a hardcover thing where you're paying a lot extra for the durability when that's not necessarily important to you. You might be using it for a semester or two and then you'll never really be carrying it around anymore. The, by far, the number one selling notebook that we have at GoulaysPens.com is the Clairefontaine 8267. So if you look C8267, that's the product code for this thing. It is the only American size notebook that we have. Uh, the, this large format, eight and a half by 11 inch. It's the only one because most of the other paper that we have is European size. So it's gonna be a little bit different. The European size notebooks that are like this are slightly narrower and slightly taller. They're usually eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarter. But this one is true American standard size. Uh, it comes in a bunch of different color options. You can see them here. Different Clairefontaine notebooks will come with different color options. Uh, in Clairefontaine, they just send us random assortments of colors. So we try to take color requests when we can. I know for a student, it's handy to have different colors for different subjects and stuff like that. We accommodate that when we can, if you put it in your order comments, but we're not always able to do that because we're always sent a random assortment of colors. So we have to kind of put them out randomly. I wish it wasn't that way, but that's how it, that's how it is. Some nice things about this particular one is that it's that American standard size. The, it's got a side wire bound, but it's a double wire binding. So it's very durable. You can, it's, it's very crush resistant. So you can really kind of beat up this binding and it can take it. It's also three hole punched, pre three hole punched. So that's really nice. Not only can you fit it into a three ring binder if you want, but it's also micro perforated. So you can actually tear the sheet out. You don't have to go tearing it out right here at the binding and then end up with those little dangly pieces that all come off and get really annoying and get all over in your backpack and everything. Um, but no, it comes this nice micro perforation right here on the side next to the three holes. And you can just cleanly tear that out and store it away when you're done using it for that particular class, that particular day. It's got a lined ruling with a margin. It's just a really, really handy notebook and it's by far the one that is most popular here at our store. But there's some other really good ones too. This one is another version of the same thing. It's the Clairefontaine C68141. Um, this one is going to be that A4 size, so it's gonna be slightly narrower, slightly taller than the other one. Um, but it's a side wire bound and these ones are a little more affordable. This one is uh, actually French ruled. And the interesting thing about French ruling is that you're not gonna see anything like this with American notebooks. This ruling is uh, what the children in, in France use uh, for their schooling. Kind of like we have in America, we have like the old dot and dash you know, type paper. Um, this is what they use to learn how to write. Um, but the reason that it's popular here in the US is because um, it has these lines going vertically and horizontally. It makes it really nice for indentation. So you can use it to practice your handwriting if you want, but also for note taking can be really handy because it's kind of like using the tab button on the computer. You know, you can indent things and outline things really nicely. That's why this tends to be really popular. 
There's a couple other different formats. One that tends to be somewhat popular is this top wire bound. The reason this one's nice is because if you're left or right handed, it doesn't really matter. You can just flip the thing over the top and there's no binding on the side to get in the way. And then you can also get these side staple bounds. These ones tend to be pretty economical too because you're not paying extra for binding. Um, you can get these in graph lined, you know, French, whatever, lots of different options for you. And in this, you're pretty much just paying for the paper pretty much, so that's kind of nice. Um, then another one that's actually somewhat popular is this uh, smaller size. This is the Clairefontaine C69741. It is a side cloth bound, so it's kind of neat. It lies pretty flat, so when you fold it open like that, it's not going to have this big hump on there, so that's really nice specifically about the Clairefontaine ones. Um, this one's got that French rolling as well, so good for note taking. Um, it tends to be a little bit thicker too than some of the other ones. You can get more details specifically of like page counts and line spacing and things like that for all of these various notebooks on GoulaPens.com. There's just way too many details to cover with all these different notebooks in the video here, so I strongly encourage you to go check that out. Um, another kind of uh, sister product to the Clairefontaine paper is Rhodia. Rhodia and Clairefontaine, they're kind of owned and made by the same company, so they use very similar paper between the two. It's all made by Clairefontaine, but the Rhodia paper is slightly thinner. Clairefontaine is going to be 90 gram weight paper, Rhodia is 80 gram weight paper. So all the Clairefontaine products here that I've mentioned use that same 90 gram white paper. Rhodia is going to use the 80 gram white paper. Slightly different feel to it, but still phenomenal, phenomenal paper. The nice thing about this one that I have in my hand here, this is the uh, Rhodia R18601. That's what the product code. So this one is that A4 size, so it's close to the American size, not exactly, but it's a top staple bound. So you can fold this binding over on the top, and it's micro perforated here at the top, so you can just tear it right out. It's lined with a margin and it's three hole punch to American standard size. So even though the sizing of the overall paper is not quite American size, it'll still fit nicely into a notebook. It'll just be a little bit smaller than some of your other American pages, but it's three hole punch there. Really, really convenient. And then one other thing I wanted to mention to you is um, Apica. Apica is a Japanese brand and they have these notebooks, which are kind of cool. The SW40. Um, it's a thinner notebook, so it's better for kind of an individual subject that you might have. Um, these are going to be less, ex less expensive than some of these. You're going to be looking just under four bucks for these. Um, it's got the double wire binding here, so again, it's got the pretty durable binding. And the Apica paper, um, it's a little bit different. It's a little more of an off-white color. It's got some thinner lines on it. And the paper itself is not going to be quite as smooth as what you get in the Rhodia and Clairefontaine. So the advantage of that is it's got a little bit different feel. So if you like kind of that more resistant feel to the writing, this might do well for you. Um, but also it's going to have a little bit better dry time than this Rhodia and Clairefontaine paper. That's kind of the trade-off you get with these really fine, fancy papers is the dry time can be a little bit extended. Usually that's not so much an issue if you're doing a long note writing session at once because you're going to have your notebook open and it's going to have time to dry. But for these Apica ones, there's several different color options for these. And these colors are all available for individual purchase, which makes it really nice for shopping for individual subjects in school. Now for the prices for all these notebooks, they all vary depending on the format, the size, and all that kind of stuff. And those prices, you can check the up-to-date ones on GoodlyPens.com. But you're going to pay anywhere from you know just under $4 for something like this to about $12 for this big honk and Clairefontaine one that's really thick. Um, the pricing itself is definitely more expensive than what you would get with your typical kind of like, you know, Mead composition or like the Mead, you know, kind of five star college rule, whatever. Um, it's going to cost more, but you're getting a more durable notebook, durable binding. The paper quality itself is going to be quite a step up. And that's what I'm going to show you right now of how much of a difference that can actually make. So now I want to do a little writing comparison here because I've got, you know, Rhodia paper and I've got Mead, which is kind of like your traditional, what you're going to see with, you know, American student grade notebooks. So Rhodia here, I've got my pen inked up with, um, you know, Diamine my Marine, one of my favorite inks. Not really a particular consequence. It's a fairly, you know, conventional ink. It's got some decent shading. I love the color. Um, but if you look at the difference between the line that you'll draw on Rhodia 
versus what you'll have with the Mead. And I'm not really trying to pick on Mead. You know, Mead's a fine company. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I have nothing against them. It's just a representation of what you're going to get with a more expensive, higher quality grade paper. Um, when you have the Rhodia, it's just more ink resistant. It's not going to absorb the ink as quickly as the Mead will. So the Mead, your line is going to look a little bit fatter. It's going to absorb the ink and this is really an issue just with fountain pens. You know, when you have conventional ballpoint pencils, that kind of thing, the paper doesn't matter quite as much, which is why, you know, Americans are not really a fountain pen culture. So this kind of paper is generally more acceptable. But you can see here, there's a noticeable difference in color. There's a noticeable difference in the tightness of the line and the variation. And then if I flip it over too, you'll be able to see that the Mead paper, oh, it actually bled through completely through the other page onto the next page. So when you're looking at the economy of a notebook, keep in mind that when you're writing, you may only get one side of a page and if it spills over to the other, that may bother you enough where you wanna skip a page. So you could be getting much more economy, whereas on the Rhodia here, it looks beautiful on the other side. So that's definitely something to take into consideration and it's a real representation of the difference in the quality of paper and how much it has an impact for when you're using fountain pens. So now let's talk pens, okay? You may already have fountain pens, but if you don't and you're looking to get into it, definitely I have some recommendations for you. I've actually kind of covered that in a couple other videos. I did a video last year, I was a little bit heavier back then, but you know, it's okay, the content's still good. If you go and check out my Fountain Pen 101 video, Fountain Pens for Students, um, that's a really good resource where I mentioned several of my favorite pens. And I actually just did another video a couple of weeks ago here on uh, the best fountain pens for newbies. Now, it can be a debate as to whether you as a new person into fountain pens should get a really inexpensive pen because it's a lower investment and you can kind of see if you like it before you invest heavier or whether you should really invest and get something a little more expensive, something more durable, it's gonna hold up better and you might like it more. Um, that's up for debate. I could argue either way, but probably my top two choices for someone just getting into fountain pens would be the Pilot Metropolitan for one. Love this pen, it's $15, comes with a converter and a cartridge, so you can use it with cartridge ink or bottled ink. Personally, I like bottled ink, it's much more economical for writing for the long term, which if you're a student getting to invest into it, definitely get into bottled ink. Um, personally, that's just my feeling about it. But um, there's lots of different color options. I only have a couple here, but there's lots of different color options and stuff. You can get a fine or medium nib. The fine nib is really fine, writes really nicely. And if you're using junky paper, if you can't get good paper and you have to use kind of the cheapest stuff that you have, get the finest nib possible. And this fine nib Metropolitan is going to be one of the finest nibs that you can get. So that's a phenomenal pen. Another just like really great pen for students. And I don't think anyone will disagree with this one on me is the Lamy Safari. It's extremely durable. It writes great. It's got swappable nibs. You can get a lot of different nib size options for you. It goes all the way down to extra fine. The extra fine on this pen is gonna be just a little bit broader actually than the fine nib on the Metropolitan, but still gonna be pretty darn good if you're using that cheap paper and you have no choice, get the extra fine nib. Um, but this pen is just, it's a workhorse, it's reliable. It uses cartridges or bottled ink, but it's Lamy proprietary cartridges, so not a lot of color options for you. You know, it's more convenient to use cartridges. Again, kind of same thing with the Metropolitan, but I personally think that if you get a converter, this pen doesn't come with a converter. It's a $30 pen and you have to pay five bucks to get a converter. So it's a $35 investment instead of a $15 investment. But a lot of people like it, comes in a lot of fun colors, really solid pen. So I don't think anybody would argue with me against the Lamy Safari. All right, next let's talk ink, okay? So there's a, there's, I mean, I've got like 600 different inks that I could recommend. And honestly, for a student, there's only a couple of criteria that you really need to worry about, okay? So as far as inks go, really you wanna get something that's interesting to you, something that's a color that's gonna be engaging to you. And generally the other thing you want is, you know, economical of course, uh, but you want something that is going to perform well on absorbent paper. You know, that's generally what you're gonna be dealing with with a lot of student grade notebooks and things like that. So unless you're going with like a Rhodia Clairefontaine kind of thing, then you can use pretty much whatever ink you want because that paper is extremely ink resistant. But if you're using a very absorbent paper, which is pretty much gonna be most of your American standard, you know, type notebooks, um, there's a few inks that I would recommend to you. Um, one of which would be Noodler's 
X Feather. Um, it comes in a couple of different size bottles. The one I have here is the four and a half ounce. Um, this is a lot, a lot of ink. But the reason I wanted to show you this one is because it actually comes with a pen. So you could kind of get a two for one deal with it. Um, it's got uh, this uh, huge bottle of ink, four and a half ounces of ink is gonna last you through your entire college career and beyond. I can pretty much guarantee that unless you're just writing tremendously. But I would, be, I would challenge you to use this whole bottle of ink. Um, and then it comes with a um, Platinum Preppy here that actually has got a little Noodler's Ink logo on it. That's kind of neat. That's actually kind of new. Uh, it's the first time I've seen that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Platinum Preppy is uh, an inexpensive fountain pen. It's not going to be like your end-all, be-all pen, but it's a great introduction into it. And this pen, you can use it as an eyedropper conversion. So you just fill this with ink. It comes with a little medicine type eyedropper in the bottle. So you can just fill the pen here. This right here is pretty much your package that gets you good to go. It's around 20 bucks. So not a bad deal if you're just getting into it and you wanna try it. So that is definitely one recommendation I have for you. Um, some other really good inks as well though. Um, Noodler's Black, that's a really just great ink. It performs really nicely. It's, it's very feather resistant. It's gonna do well on just about everything. It's also permanent ink um, as is X Feather. Noodler's 54th Massachusetts as well. I just realized I have these boxes here and I didn't even take the ink out of them yet, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, it's a blue-black ink. So it's a little bit different. It's not uh, you know, gonna be like, make your eyes bust out of your head because it's so bright, uh, like some inks could be, but uh, it's gonna be a nice performing ink, really works really nicely in most pens, so that also would be a good one to look into. Um, and then another ink that I wanted to shout out to uh, was for you teachers out there who are correcting papers, uh, Schaefer Red. Schaefer Red is like classic red, really good. Noodler's Nikita is another really good one that a lot of people use, but the Schaefer Red is a great correction ink that um, a lot of teachers uh, like to recommend. The last thing I wanted to cover as far as school supplies is highlighters. I know highlighters are something that a lot of students like to use. I know I don't highlight hardly anything anymore, but back when I was in school, I was highlighting all the time, except when I had to return my textbooks, they would take off more of a discount with highlighting. So I tended not to highlight my textbooks quite as much, but my own notes and stuff like that, yeah, sure, I would do that. Uh, but anyway, so there's a couple of different options for you. One is Platinum uh, makes a $3 highlighter marker. It's a chisel tip, you know, kind of felt marker that comes with a highlighter cartridge. So you can get more cartridges like this. Um, that's certainly one way to go. If you do a lot of highlighting though, it's probably gonna be worth it to get either the converter for this pen to allow you to use bottled ink or convert this pen to an eyedropper. Much like I was talking about with the X Feather, you can do that with this pen too. Just throw an O-ring on here, put a little bit of silicone grease on the threads maybe. I've got a video on how to convert this preppy to an eyedropper, uh, so I'll put a link to that. But you can actually fill this whole body of, pen, of, of the pen with ink and you can be writing for a really long time. Uh, and the ink that I like to recommend for highlighting is Noodler's Firefly. That's just kind of my highlighting ink of choice. There's a few different options out there, but this is like your typical standard bright yellow ink, and it looks really crazy. It's kind of chartreuse and everything. It actually glows under UV light, so that can be a lot of fun. Uh, even if you're not in the note taking, you can have you know parties and stuff where you're doing crazy stuff with it. I would not ingest it, but just letting you know. Um, it does glow under the light, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then Platinum also has this preppy marker, which is the same kind of thing as that chisel tip highlighter, except the marker is more of a fine point. So if you want to do finer highlighting, I guess, you can do that with the marker. And there's several different color options you can get for these pens. If you want to get something a little bit more durable for your highlighting, if you're really going to be highlighting a lot, so you're going to law school or something, and you know you need to highlight like crazy, then I would recommend stepping up to the uh, Pilot Parallel. Nice thing about the Parallel is it is a metal nib that is this um, kind of stub looking thing. These pens are still very affordable, right around 10 bucks, and you can still use the highlighter ink with it, except because it's a metal tip, it's going to last way, way longer. You can clean it out and it'll, you know, it'll last you all through school. Um, whereas the preppies, you're gonna have to replace those tips every so often because they'll get clogged and stuff. It's just kind of how they are. They're more like conventional highlighters. Um, whereas this one is more of a you know, pretty serious highlighting tool. 
Um, you can do all kinds of other calligraphy and stuff with these pens too, but um, it comes in four different size options, um, anywhere from 1.5 millimeter wide to six millimeter wide. Now the 1.5 you can actually use for kind of everyday writing. It's, it's thin enough where you can do that. The six millimeter is almost too big for, for highlighting. So I recommend the sweet spots, either the 2.4 or the 3.8 millimeter for highlighting in most textbooks. So that about covers everything. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau. I'm happy to continue to chat. I know I covered a lot of information here in one video, and even still, I could have gone way deeper on any one of these products that I covered. But that's where it helps to go check out GouletPens.com. Yes, I'm a retailer. Yes, I sell this stuff. But even if you're not gonna buy from me, go check out my website just to look at the details of all these different notebooks and ink and stuff like that because I have a lot more information on my site than what I was able to cover in this video. So hopefully this is helpful to you if you're getting ready to head back to school. Good luck to you. I'm so glad that I'm not in your shoes because I just did not enjoy school that much. I'm way more enjoying being out of school, but paid my dues, got my sheepskin, wearing my shirt. So I did my thing and I know you can do it too. So good luck to all you students out there. Hopefully this is helpful to you and right on.